How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Forever Arsenal podcast. Bright and early Thursday morning, the morning after the game, Luton at the Emirates. We got the three points. It wasn't the best of games, but we're here to talk about it. And we're going to obviously touch in on Brighton coming up this weekend away at the Amex. So make sure you get the likes in, make sure you get your comments in, make sure you subscribe, put a notification bell on all of that, people. Um, you know what it is already, Forever Arsenal. Preview, review, comments of the day, predictions. You're all here for it. Next hour or so, we'll be here. So, 1,000 likes. Let's let's make it happen, people. James, well, I was with you. Jordan, Lee, mm. all good? All good, thank Mr. you very much. All good. And actually, James, I was with you, but I might as well ask, all good, because I, I know yesterday the live chat didn't agree that the second half wasn't, well, I say didn't agree that the second half wasn't the best of games, but um, yeah, um, how you doing? No, I'm good. Obviously, I'm good. I felt I just felt a bit misunderstood. I was saying, look, we're not playing well the second half, and you get the usual stop complaining, stop complaining. It's, like, it's just an observation. We were we were not playing well that second. Okay, maybe not playing well is a touch too far because at no point did we really look out of control of the occasion. Mm -hmm. um, but I think. You, to take your foot off the gas, you don't have to also not have the ball for the whole 45 minutes and not have a single shot till Tommy Asu in the 80th or whatever. I felt we were a little too passive, um, but it was ultimately just a little bit of... I don't like to tempt fate. That's how I am. I don't like to, you know, a deflected cross into the box. Suddenly it's 2-1 and things get nervy. Um I felt that maybe we could have put the game to bed or at least play a little bit more football in their half. However, it was ultimately the perfect night. And that is the headline. The headline is we rotated, we gave the right minutes to players, we picked up three points and we kept it moving. And it's nine wins out of 10 with the only drop points coming in a draw at the Etihad. For me, that is a sublime run. I saw someone on Twitter say, that's the kind of run that should put you five points clear and it doesn't. That's what yeah. we're up against. Um, everyone was asking, can Arsenal go on these 10-game runs that City and Liverpool have? Well, we have now. And now we've got to try and do it again. Um, so, no, I, I just, in short, because I'm not really going to say too much on this game, I just felt that the first half was good. It was, you know, pretty open, but we were we were good. We played some good football. The changes, you know, Smith Rowe stepped up and did well. We saw some nice things from Partin Zinni. We saw some not nice things at times. Um, second half, like I said, I don't like to tempt fate. And I thought maybe we need to build a little bit of momentum going into this run. But I guess a win is the best way to do that over any performance. So, yeah, I'm definitely happy. Just wasn't an amazing night of football, but who cares? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, when you're doing watch alongs and when you're doing content day in, day out, you're going to give your opinions on things that sometimes people are like, why is he talking about this? But we talk about Arsenal pretty much, you know, every day of our lives, especially what we're doing now. So some people, yeah. sorry, Turkish, I don't mean to cut you, but people also were missing the fact that, like, you can take your foot off the gas, but that doesn't mean being in control and relaxing and, and, um, you know, being comfortable with tuning up doesn't necessarily mean you should have a bad first touch, that you should have a poor counter-attack, that you should be making some of the errors. So, like, it was also that. It was, like, some players as well are looking a little off it here. Um, yeah. You're right. When you're doing content every day, people are listening to every single thing you say, but obviously we're covering every single movement of the club and every single thing that happens. But, yeah, I think it was just not... It was a weird night, but we got the win. Yeah, yeah. And I don't come the end of it, I think that's all that matters. Um, but then I do think, you know, form does matter going into the business end of the season. We've seen it before. Um, I'm sure we'll see it again. But Jordan, Lee, mm. Lee, Lee let, let's let's go over to you. You was there at the game. Um similar thoughts is one of those games where we just got the job done, rotation probably hampered some of the yeah. chemistry, maybe fluidity, maybe. 100% I agree totally with, with James. You know, disjointed performance from start to finish. If I'll be really honest, I felt the first 20 minutes because of the changes. Um, it, it, it was uh, a little bit bitty, if I'll be honest. But then we got the goals. Um, listen, it was a comfortable night. I, I, I actually sat there, didn't think um, we was ever in any danger of losing the game. Defensively, we played really well. That, I've got to say that. Gabriel Saliba... Ben White. Ben White got caught out a few times on the left-hand side. Wasn't really 
at it, at it, at it on, in the second half because he, he, he was reserving energy. I think that's how, how to look at it. Like, you know, the second half, again, with all the changes in the first half, on in the second. I actually thought, what did I think about it? Well, I thought, on the way home, because it was a little bit of an early finish, I thought, I'll tell you, I'll put on Talks Ball. Let's like, start listening to them. Nothing about the game. Do you know what they were criticising or everybody was criticising? Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me guess. Yeah, at the Emirates. What's that? The atmosphere at the Emirates. <laughs> that was was it? What they was criticising. Nothing about the game and all that. And then I turned around and I looked thoughts of myself. Ah, oh, <laughs> this it was the light bulb, light bulb moment. We done well. We, we, there's nothing really to talk about. We have done a professional performance without going mad about it. Tottenham played these three or four days later, one nil down, having to run around and to the last minute to get the goal. That was us last season. This season, we're a completely different team. 2 nil up with changes, get the job done, move on to the next game. I'll tell you what, I'll add another eight games of them. Thank you very much and move on. And yes, the atmosphere weren't great yesterday, like, but the game weren't great. You know what I mean? It was a hard game to to really get into, like, you know. Um, do you know what? Because we knew what we, what it was. It was just about getting the job done. And what we've done now is, um, for me, instead of nine games, it's eight games. And we've ticked off a box. And today, look, listen, we all know uh, what's going to happen to, tonight and about tonight. All what was important today was doing our job. Because I tell you what, those are the sort of games you can slip up on. But we didn't. You know, they huffed and puffed. Luton didn't bother us. I thought Gabriel again was a mince yesterday. Again, I don't know how you guys feel about that. I just think the, the guy's getting better and better. But, when, when you know, Raya, Raya doesn't have hardly any shots to, to save these days. That's, that's the massive compliment. And I'll just the one big up for me, like, you know, Smith Rowe, Hasn't had hardly any football. Had to come in and, and deliver because if he didn't deliver, everybody going, "Ah, oh, that's why he's not in his side." Big up to him because I thought he was brilliant on the day, contributed on the two goals, and now puts himself in the frame. Oh, can he play against Brighton? Can we have? Can we afford to rest Odegaard and give him another go? Little things like that were all were all good. So all in all, listen, are we, are we going to think in ten years' time? Do you remember that Luton game? No. <laughs> We're not, we're not. Um, before we get into the individual players, because I think Emma Smith Rowe definitely deserves a little segment on the show today. Jordan, overall thoughts? Like, how are you feeling? 2 0? <clears throat> job done? Um, or were yeah. you looking for a bit more? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm with Lee. I think the fact that Talk Sport um, are criticizing, I think two things can be true. The fact that it, the atmosphere did stink last night, it, it was awful. It was awful last night. Um, but that. that I'll take it, as Lee said. The fact, the fact that they are talking about that just means that we've done our job. We've, we've, we've done a professional job. Um, no dirty sheets. I got my clean sheet. Got the three points. No injuries. No suspensions. Four of our eleven got a night off. Um, as I have been since we lost that last game to Fulham. I'm just one game at one game at a time. Tick, 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 tick. So for me, that that's 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 the main focus for me. I don't have a lot to say about this game in particular because I'm actually more interested in in the Brighton game coming up. But just a couple of things I will say. Um, I, I'm really enjoying this title race, and whether we come first, second, or third, I want to come first. Obviously, I'm enjoying watching my football team. I'm enjoying watching my team grow. I'm enjoying watching my team learn lessons because it was a was it about this this stage last season we fell off or was it a little bit later? A little bit later. It was a bit later. Okay. We're one game away from it, I think. Oh, so there you go. So I'm, I'm more confident about us pushing, if it's not going to be us, the venture winner all the way this year in a way that I could I could feel Man City's breath on my neck last season. It kind of was inevitable that we were going to get overtaken. So I'm just enjoying having a competent team and without going into other football teams, looking at Chelsea and looking at United, you know, I just think to myself... I remember when, when that was us. <laughs> I remember when that was us. And we're a serious football club. Not just team. We are, a, the, the whole club is moving serious now. And all we've said, Turkish, me and you in particular, is we don't expect to win Premier Leagues, but be a serious club and prepare to at least be competitive. At least be, and that's what we're getting right now. And 
you know, Luton, Luton's Luton. We've got the three points. We move on. Liverpool will win tonight. And we'll go back to second. But I'm just, I thought about, I'm just enjoying this race. And I'm confident that whatever happens, first, second or third, even if we finish third, it won't be by more than three or four points. It's going to be, it's going to be super tight. That top three is going to be tight all, all, all the way. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy about that. I would just say, because I know you want to move on to Smith Rowe, I was looking at the squad as well. I had half an hour next season. There's four or five players that I'm looking at the squad and thinking I would still sell. And I'm thinking, how can we level up next year? In Ketty, I'd sell. Uh, Nelson, I would sell. Smith Rowe, I would still sell. Zinchenko, I would sell. And the other one was... No, it wasn't even Partey. Um, who played yesterday? There's another player that I would sell as well um, and, and, and level up. So... Yeah, I've, I've, I've kind of, I'm just enjoying the moment, but equally, I'm looking at how can we improve for next for next season. Do you know, do you know what what strikes me yesterday? Like just listening to Talk Sport yesterday as well. Like you know, <clears throat> everybody game like you know about about the crowd, and then they went on to Manchester City, and guess love and behold, love and behold, oh Phil Foden, how fantastic was he against Aston Villa yesterday? Like, how fantastic was he? Didn't get a kick against us. Nothing said about it, uh, you know. Um, Aston Villa went there yesterday and got stuffed. They're fourth in the league, going for Champions League. But like, you know, nothing. You know, um, no criticism coming the, for them for 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 being gun ho or whatever or, or getting stuffed. Oh, Foden, fantastic! Didn't even know he was playing against us. Had to come <laughs> off like. Right? So there's a difference. And I think that's something that we have to take into that now, like, you know, um, um, we're going to have to get used to that, like, they're going to criticise us when we when we do well, they're going to criticise us when we do bad. Um, but at the moment, the one thing they can't criticise is the team. Mm. And then they can't criticise the performance and whatever, because even yesterday, even on su Sunday, masterclass defending, yesterday, I, as, as Jordan said there, it, I'm enjoying watching Arsenal grow. We're, we're a proper team. I've always said that. They've got no divine right to win titles, but we have got a divine right as fans to, to demand title challenges. Be competitive. And I don't care what anybody says now. We are challenging for this title. Whether we win it or not is a different thing. It's a question, you know, everybody keeps asking us now. Are we going to win the title? Are you going to win the Champions League? Are they asking Aston Villa this? Are they asking Spurs this? Are they asking Chelsea this? Are they asking Man United this? These teams, Chelsea and Man United, for 10 years ridiculed us for, for being 8th or ninth and all that. Like, I, I don't see them being ridiculed as much as what we are. At the end of the day, we are in it. They're not, and I'm bloody enjoying it. And I'll tell you what, as much, I don't care about the atmosphere yesterday, like, you know, I bet the atmosphere weren't that fantastic the Yeti had yesterday, like, because why? Because it's a comfortable win. And when you're having a comfortable win, you know, you ain't putting on the atmosphere. Let's have a look at Anfield today when they're two or three nils up, up, see if they're what they're doing, like, you know. At the end of it, criticise all you like. Arsenal are in it, and I'm loving it. I've, yeah. I've, I've said about, I don't know how many podcasts back, but maybe two, three months ago now, that um, when originally people were talking about the problems with the atmosphere, I said it didn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. I said, of course, when Liverpool come to town and Man City and you've got the big ones, you know, you need the Emirates to get behind you. And in a tough moment where things aren't really going right for the players, that crowd will get behind the team. But I genuinely feel that actually this almost apathy is not the word, but this sort of like, yeah, we won. Nice. On to the next. I think that's a good thing. For the players, mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing for the fans. Getting used to it, this becoming very routine. Um, yesterday was such a no-fuss performance, wasn't it? It was yeah. just, it almost was just like, oh, got, got a job to do, guys. Three points, there we go. Right, let's go. Like, it was so, it could easily have been, right, we've got to bounce back after City and look what we did at the Etihad. And we're all fully charged. We're you know, flying into challenges and, all oh, that's an early yellow. And, oh, we miss it. And everything gets a little bit. And, oh, he's picked up a red card for some City tackles. And then the whole thing gets messy. And it was just incredibly, like, dull. But good, <laughs> like in and a we, good we can't way. Win. And James, we can't win because if we had over celebrated last night the two 0 win, <laughs> everyone would be saying, "Oh, Arsenal are too emotional." Oh, Arsenal are going over the top. And then when we kind of just treat it as, as you said, a routine, mundane 
two two nil clean sheet three points get the hell out and move on we're being criticized for being for being dull like i said the emirates was dull yep. last night but who cares <laughs> who cares yeah they yeah they didn't let they didn't let the city performance get to their head at all i think wow you know look at us or anything which was good you're right the word professionals use this podcast i agree i have one i'm gonna do my i'm gonna, I'm gonna take jordan's role i'm gonna do i've got a something and it, look, this isn't i know i oh know i'm sorry yesterday you took my role on the watch along and today he's taking your role <laughs> it's a new i want to hear know. this oh, i know ne next episode i'm going to be taking a shit mid, mid video <laughs> I'll, I'll take lee's role for that one <laughs> Um, I hope you don't mind, Lee. I was the one on the toilet, but I wasn't the that one. Was Turkish. That was Turkish. Turkish. <laughs> that was Turkish. Yeah, right, you know? Hey, 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 Let's hey. have it right. Let's have it hey, right. I told you that in good faith. <laughs> I told you that in good faith. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Lee Judge's uh, little poke. Anyway, um, so... Uh, and this is nothing different. I've said this on the watch. I'm going to say this at the beginning of the video. If I'm being hypercritical and overanalyzing of an affair we really don't need to overanalyze, but we have a podcast to fill. Um, I now go back a little bit. City, that was a draw. Very different kind of game. And then go to Porto, 120 minutes, slogging it out. And then Brentford, 88th, 87th minute winner through Kai Havertz. We're actually now four games deep into not playing our best football. So the one thing I wish we got a little bit more of, and it might make no difference and it doesn't matter, as we've all stated, is a little bit of momentum building. I don't know if you can just... We've got, we've got momentum building in the form of results and belief and almost that sense of like, look at the professionalism we're showing in the run. That's all great. I don't know if you can just click your fingers and find the football that we were playing in February, March, just like that. Um and I think come Brighton and Bayern, we're going to have to liven up a little bit. <laughs> That's all I'll say. That's my mind a little. We, and I, those other three games are so unique in the way Brentford and Porto defended. Then City, we had to do something different. Luton, we made loads of changes. So I can acknowledge all the various reasons why in those games we didn't play our best football. No one championed that more than me after City. Um, but Brighton will be interesting because Arteta will revert a lot more, in my opinion, to what we were doing pre-Brentford and how do we look is my question. You know, how do we look? Because Brighton are a good side. We know Bayern are a good side. Um, and maybe the fact that they're quite open teams will play into our hands and we will find that rhythm again. That's my only thing. Like, what the reason I mention it is I don't want to come to touch wood. I think we're going to beat Brighton. <clears throat> I don't want to come to that if something goes wrong. And we're all sat there going, what happened? Well, where did this come from? We weren't that great, really, the four before. We were City, but, you know, in terms of attacking fluid football. And so if there's a pattern, we should acknowledge it and then see if Brighton, they're able to go, right, cool, now it requires this and we're going to show it. And I think they will. I think they will, but I'm just making the point. Do, do you know, two points on that. Um, I, I, I was thinking that as well, funny enough, but do you know one of the reasons why we haven't, I've done that over the last four or five games. I think one one of the big things is that Martinelli's not been there. I think he's a massive, massive player for us, you know, in attacking fit sense. You're right. The last game that he that, played yeah. was when we won 6-0. Um, I, I do think that he gives us something completely different. And the other thing I've got to say, I I, I, I agree, but don't you think, again, it was a le another lesson learned yesterday? Last time we, we went to uh, a big game and played and got a point was at Liverpool. Um, drew 1-1. One, one. Their next two home games, we lost. Didn't do that yesterday. Like, had a great result on um, the weekend. Backed it up with a, a solid performance with changes and all that. Like, you know, and I, I think right. you're right. I think that come. I, I think that we're trying to conserve a little bit of energy because we know when that Bayern Munich game comes along, I, I think Arteta is going to make changes again come Saturday. I, I do believe that. And then, as we was talking yesterday. It'd be very, very interesting what his starting eleven is in that game against Bayern Munich because I think he's going to show his hand, which is his best team in that game, if I'll be honest. So I think that he'll try and navigate this game on Saturday, which will be very, very difficult. And then I, 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 I got a sense that we'd be going all guns blazing against them. Uh, and to try and get the job done in one game. I know that might sound silly, but that's what I think we're going to be looking to do. So, uh, but again, I think 
there was lessons yesterday and, and the lesson was, you know, look, we, we picked up a good point uh, um, yeah, he had, but we must back it up with a result today, yesterday, and we've done that. Yeah, I don't really. Yeah, I predicted a big win. I thought it'd be goals. I saw the lineup. I thought, all right, we'll still win the game. Still should be some goals. In the end, I, I didn't really mind leaving there with a one 0 win. It, it just felt like come the ninety minutes, I didn't really care about you know what just happened in that game. It was just about making sure we, you know, built on the draw at Etihad with a win because that Lee said. You know, this season, after one of our big games, one of our big points, one of our big results, mm -hmm. we crumbled in the next couple. Last season, leading up to a couple of games against City, we crumbled in a couple of games. This season, both leading up to those big games, and mm -hmm. now, after Man City, we've, you know, come back with three points. And, and with James as well, because form, in my opinion, does matter in the last, yes. you know, eight games of the season. So, Brighton, Bayern Munich, Aston Villa... It's a perfect chance for us, you know, three sides that are going to try to take it to us. Um, probably least of the lot will be Bayern, considering no fans. But they're all trying to take it to us. They're all trying to score goals. And I think that's where Arsenal excel. Um, you know, yeah. I get, even with yesterday, I, I, my thought process was exactly the same as James. Boring, we're not really doing anything in the second half. But what I like more is that the control element, if we've got goals and we're in control as much as maybe not we was yesterday, but we still wasn't conceding shots on target, then we're in a very good place because the, the result is wrapped up in the first 30, 40, essentially. When's the last time you could say that for an Arsenal side? Usually we need to wait to 80 minutes, 85 minutes to even be comfy with a two-goal lead. Nowadays, we're looking at two-goal leads, half-time, job, job done. That's what I like about Arsenal. It's not so much helter-skelter, it's rock and roll, it's just control and as long as we get goals early on that's fine obviously that control element starts becoming concerning if it's 70 minutes into a game and it's nil nil or 70 minutes in we ain't creating chances with one nil down but touch wood so far you know it's worked perfectly in our favor and i think last night when you look at the 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 the, the rotation three points you know a positive performance or two from the people that are not you know regular starting lineup players Oh, we could have really asked for um, Smith Rowe. I'll move it on to Smith Rowe now. I think I'm happy for him. I'm with Jordan that I think it's a bit too late to save his Arsenal career, um, but he has a chance because this is the first game he started in a little while. It's an important game. It was an important game, and he comes out with you know flying colours. He comes out being the difference maker. So if we want, we if we are to achieve great things this season. He has played his part in at least one of the games coming up to. And I think I think that's nice because two years ago, he, he was seen as someone who's going to be integral to our side come this season. He's seen as someone that if he doesn't buck up his ideas, he's gone. So I like that Smith Rowe came in and played his part off the ball, on the ball. Well, not so much on the ball, but off the ball, he was, you know, as good as Odegaard. He was defending, he was working hard. He faded in the second half, but... I'm just glad for Emil that he managed to get some minutes and he, he got some he got some action in front of goal. Can I just go, can I go before before Lee jumps in? Just I, I, I think you used the right phrase there. I I, I think he, it has it is too late to save his Arsenal career for me. Um, I think he was the best player on the pitch last night, but it was it's his first, in my opinion, good performance this season. Other people have kind of really gassed up some fleeting appearances off the bench here and there. I've not been impressed by any of his... I, I think he's been okay in some of those sub-appearances. I don't think he's been... He's never played a game this season that makes me think, oh, he should be in contention to start the next one. And I, I, I accept that it's difficult to kind of get form when you're in, out, in, out, in, out, start the Carabao Cup, then you don't play for 10 games and you're in for 10 minutes. I accept that. And I it's also clear to see that the guy's got talent no one's doubting that he's a good player but I look at it more as, as he's an asset that's a 30 million pound asset there and if we're not going to play him um I'd rather reinvest that money into someone that I think could be a squad player or even towards a number eight who I think could start for Arsenal next season so I think it's fair to say he was the best player on the pitch last night but for me it's not enough and if I was in charge I'd be looking to move him on for a fee that's that's fair. That's fair. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame, Lee. It's a shame, isn't it? That's, yeah, that's yeah. Your face. yeah, it's not it's, it, it, it's not the words you want to hear, but really it's it's the truth. 
No, no, I, I get that. And uh, as I said yesterday, like, I think everybody likes Smith Rowe, let's be honest, we, we, we do. But, you know, and, and I think that even like Jordan was saying, that's probably with a heavy heart. I get what you're saying. I do get that, you know, we we want him to be... I don't think he gives a... <laughs> do, you, do you care, Jordan, <laughs> with a heavy heart? No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I think, you know... Bleed every, for him, Jordan. <laughs> every, everybody, every Arsenal fan you bump into, like, you know, let's be really honest, right? All, all like Smith Rowe. Even when I felt he didn't deserve a chance to play in the but go, oh, Emil, Emil Smith deserves a chance to play. You know, he should be playing in this game. And I'm looking and going, really, he ain't done nothing at this moment in time. But we all want him to do well. So I'm so, so pleased that he has. But I, I do think, forget about next season as far as I'm concerned. He's got a job to do this season because I watched one player yesterday and I think, well, he cannot continue to do the what he's doing. That is Martin Odegaard. He cannot continue to work that rate, work as hard as he can, Play against Saturday, play against Tuesday, play against Saturday, play against Wednesday. I think there's going to be a game, and I'm, I've, I've here marked Aston Villa when he probably might get the break. And that's when Smith Rowe's got to come in, and that's when he's got to do the business again. Like, you know, for me, very, very good 70 minutes from him. He's going to be very, very important. Players like Smith Rowe are going to be very, very important now leading up to, mm. the, to this. For, for if we're going to go on two fronts, if we're going to get past Bayern Munich, the Smith Rose, the Thomas Parties, the Jorginho's are going to be uh, Tommy Asu. You can put in there Shinchenko as well. They're going to be very, very important for what happens to us going forward because they've got to come in knowing that they're not going to be playing in the big game against Bayern Munich or whatever like. But they're going to come into the games that are just maybe not as big on paper, but just as important. And I, and I think that yesterday was a, a really good performance for him. He needed to play well. And I didn't think he did in the first 10 minutes. A couple of times he got into the box and it broke down on him. But then he he done something good and his confidence grew. And, and I listen, I like the way he was picking the ball up from wherever, confident and all that. Like, you know, he's picking it up in dangerous areas. This is a guy that's not played for a long while. Yes, it's Luton, uh, a, a team, by the way, that well-organised, powerful and everything like that. So for me, you know, I'm just – forget about what's going to happen with him next season – I think a lot of people forget how good he was for a couple of seasons for us. You know what I mean? I thought he was outstanding for us, you know, um, and because of the injuries. And it's not because he's a bad player, guys. It's not because he's um, got a bad attitude. It's just injuries have hampered his career and uh, and put him down the pecking order. And um, But yesterday was a reminder to me that he's a good player. Yeah, I mean, you, when injuries hit at a time where the club you're at is rebuilding so heavily, it's 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 the worst of times because yeah. the club are not in a position to wait for you to come back and give you the best of platforms. They're in, you know, it's rebuilding, so they're going to think past you. Um, I could throw in there, I won't yet, because I think towards the end of the season we will do, but there's a question with Vieira too. He's been back for a hell of a long time. He's not coming Oh, yeah, I forgot about him. Bench. Um, so right. I think later right. on down, yeah. down the line, I think a question would be, you know, if we're talking about Smith Rowe potential sale this summer, is Vieira on that list or is it one or the other? Or is it but I think that's a conversation we have later on. But mm-hmm. Partey, I think Partey deserves a mention. He came on. I think it was Smith Rowe's best chance, the shot between the legs. Mm. I Thank think you, Partey, Partey started that with a nice kind of disguised ball into Odegaard. Odegaard, a nice little, you know, neat, you know, footwork into Smith Rowe. But Partey mm-hmm. had a few moments like that. He had a moment like that at the end of the city game. Where the Trossard chance came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw it yeah. again against Luton, and and I can't lie, I'm happy for Smith Rowe, but as an Arsenal fan supporter in the business end of the season, I think Partey being somewhat back to what we know Partey is would be the best of the lot. If I had to, if I had to pick one player that I could ask to return and and play a pivotal part in the last eight games from the ones on the fringes, it probably. It would be Partey or Jesus, but I'd lean towards Partey, probably. Mm. At the um, risk of sounding like I'm contradicting myself, because I was saying that the second half, maybe we sat back a little bit more than we needed to. Could that also have been a response to the fact that with Partey, Smith, Rowe in there, Zinni at left back, did that first half feel to anyone a little bit more basketball than maybe the eight or nine before that I've been. Now, I'm not saying that it was end-to-end. We have a chance, Luton have a chance. It wasn't really like that. It definitely felt like we were running backwards a lot more. 
it definitely felt like there was a lot more like right back to position. And what I've loved about Arsenal in the eight games before City was our ability to just keep teams just pinned in that we just played so comfortable in their half and we've never really, you know, Saliba and Gabriel swept everything up on the halfway and we've gone again. This did feel a little bit more open. So I do think there's something about the makeup of our midfield that it it lacks a touch of control without Rice and Jorginho or just Rice because to be fair, we've always had that when it's Rice, Erdogan, Havertz as well. Um, but away from that, I agree. I thought Partey showed some really nice things. Um, he wasn't... I. It, He's still playing at like 60% of his level, in my opinion. Um, when Partey's at his best, he's the best, one of the best players to watch on the pitch. Like he can be really, really influential and really good, you know, you really big that. for this team. So we do forget that. We do yeah. forget that. So I, I, I think I think when everyone in this squad is fit and firing and at their very best, it's Erdogan, Partey, Rice, which is our best midfield. And to think that we've got this far in the season without that is pretty special um so i really want to see them back together um i just also wanted to add on the smith road discussion sorry for just quickly swinging it back but i just wanted to add to that as well that i see it slightly more positively in that when arteta brought smith row in at first to save his job <laughs> and we beat chelsea 3-1 we all remember that day i felt with the signing of erdegaard quite soon after that Vieira then came within a year and a bit of that I actually felt that maybe Arteta didn't rate Smith Rowe, that he kind of appreciated he had a part to play in our squad, that at the time we needed someone of that profile, we didn't have it, and that maybe with his injuries, he couldn't really rely on him. And then we moved to this system where our wingers had to be really fast and dynamic, and Smith Rowe can't really do that, and he's playing on the left. So I just thought, has Arteta moved this team beyond Smith Rowe? But the way he talks about him, like he's so glowing in his words, he's so... I love him. He gives us something different. He's brilliant. He's this, and I know that he can say that about other players, but I'm not sure he gasses players who doesn't rate this much. So I, I, I think Arteta's really, you know, we always think about the team and the 11 and preparing this group for the title race, but there'll be little side projects. There'll be other things going on. And I do think Smith Rowe is one of them. I do think getting Smith Rowe ready to be whatever midfielder he needs him to be is part of that side, but it's part of just not giving him too many minutes now, keeping him away from it all, developing him nicely. And then when he came in yesterday, he looked really ready for it with his work ethic. And then with his, you know, that underlap for the second goal is really good. We haven't seen that since Granit Xhaka left. Rice has done it a few times, but that's a nice little thing to add to our team. Um, so I, I think while I have my doubts about Smith, I think Arteta actually does rate him massively. And I thought he'd be gone this summer. I don't anymore. I think Arteta's gonna gonna keep him and keep working with him. Okay. I mean, on the to on the topic, but what you mentioned about you know the football with all of them playing, you think Zinchenko played the biggest part in that? Because you know Zinchenko Zinchenko yesterday, and by that I mean all the positives yeah. you get on the ball and the passing and the overload and the quality there. But also the moments defensively or the moments giving it away, which caused us to run back quite a few times. Um, so I'd probably lean towards him being the reason. Do you think it was him or do you think it was the forwards? I thought really at the end of the day, we'd give a ball, it, the passing weren't great, like the final no, yeah. pass was poor, uh, which meant that we'd give the ball away a little bit. The rotation, we didn't ret retain the ball like on the right hand side with Nelson, like we do with Saka. You know, Saka gets the ball and, and, and holds it and then runs at players, you know. Uh, I thought out of the front three, Trossard was our best player. I thought that he he he, he had a reasonable game. But I, I'm going to say it now. I, I felt that I'm, I'm you know, like I love Kai Havertz and all that. But that was Kai Havertz playing on 50%. Yes, sir. He wasn't really um, like he was the last few games. He coasted through the game. Like, I'm not saying that he should or he shouldn't. I think he's a vital player for us, you know. Um, but I didn't think he was going to go in. He, he was just not as physical as not, uh, what he normally is and pinning players. He was just trying to like knock knock the ball back and all that. I, I felt that we wasn't quite great up front and, and that's why maybe he was breaking down on us a little bit more than normal. But I, I, I thought Thomas Partey was... Um, uh, I thought it was for 60 minutes. I, I just That was the best thing for me, just watching him play again. Watching him... 
You know, the way he, he plays balls in between lines. I know that sounds silly. He makes it look easy, you know, but it gets us in at a different position. And I thought people were criticising Shinchenko yesterday. I'm watching a different game. I thought he'd done okay yesterday. I thought that, uh, yeah, yeah he he gives the ball away. So I thought he'd done well. I thought he looked sharp, considering that he was coming back in there. Um, and I, I think those sort of games is that when you play Shinchenko, and and he, he done well. Like I, I think I, I'm, I quite like Shinchenko, and I think that if we was in a cup final, I said it yesterday. That's our best back four because he does give us something different. I know people are going to disagree. I say, oh, oh, you know what I mean. The one who watches Netflix. Uh, nodding his head up there, you know what I mean? How dare can he comment on it? But anyway, like, I'm sure he's going to. But yeah. I, I, I quite like Shinchenko, I really do. Come on, I'd, I'd tell him, I'd tell him he, he's, he's on my sell list this summer. I, I, I think there's some good things that he does. I think the first season he came in, he was definitely a weapon for, for, for our overall attack. I'm just sorry, I like defenders that can defend properly I don't care what you do going forward unless you're Trent Alexander-Arnold and what you give going forward significantly outweighs any defensive deficient deficiencies yeah I, I would I would buy a left back in the in the summer I, I, I mean Timber will be left back next year anyway and then you've got Tommy Asu to cover so do you need another left back anyway but I still I would like a left footed I mean give your and give your yeah. yeah so I think Arteta's moving up I think Arteta is slowly but surely moving on from him I, I, yeah, I, 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 would suggest that unless he's yeah, unless and there's won. value there, and there's yeah, value there. I think you can get thirty mil for Zinchenko. Like I, I think this is the time to sell. If you're gonna sell him, you know, it's, I think now's the time to sell him. Otherwise, you give him another contract, and then uh, what's he worth in two years' time? So I, I would, I think there's again, I'm I'm just looking at. I think we need three big starters or two, at least two big starters for next season's eleven, and it's gonna cost money. And I think I'm looking at where we can generate money. And there's there's a lot of money. You mentioned, I think somebody mentioned they'd, they'd keep, I think it was James and he would keep Smith Rowe. That means Vieira's got to go. Because you can't have <laughs> Rice, Partey, Vieira, Smith Rowe. Uh, I know Odegaard's slightly more advanced, but you can't have that. And, and there's no great eight in all of those players there. I still think we need mm. an eight. So I'm just looking we at did. where you can generate money to bring in the players next year to help us retain or win the title or Champions League next season. I'm going to I'm gonna keep it moving on to Brighton next, but I think on the topic of, you know, the fringe players, the players that have come in the rotation, it speaks volumes that we're not even going to touch in on Reese Nelson, um, which is unfortunate because I've, you know, been a big admirer of Reese over the years. Bye, Reece. Um, but again, similar to Smith Rowe, I just feel like, it's coming to an end. Not too sure why the extension of the contract was given last season if he wasn't going to be relied upon a little bit more this season. But going from not in the squad completely against City to starting against Luton, I just don't get it. Maybe that was a kick up mm. the arse, not being in the squad against City, but then starting the Nick. It didn't work and he didn't take his opportunity. So touch wood, Saka's back on the weekend because he will be important can, for the next three fixtures. Can we, one, one quick thing, Turkish, and it's not important at all, but one disappointing thing for me is that I think last night Phil Foden won player of the year and Saka not playing last night was my only kind of disappointment because I really wanted Saka to win player of the year this year. Um, I think Phil Foden won it last year. Saka not playing and then him scoring a hat-trick. Um, uh, too, too early. You think it's too early? Uh, yeah. I, I think Foden Foden's been team. great. Van Dijk has been brilliant. Declan Rice has been brilliant. I, I think Rodri as well. For, I, I, I think... And there's a lot of football still to play and a lot of big moments. If any one of those teams choke, it it, it looks very different for me. So, But aren't the yeah. nominees in? Aren't the, aren't the nominations already in? Or they, they must be in oh, soon. It's not a, there's not eight player, more games player, to vote. Player, players play it funny enough. Gets, they, you get to choose that in January. It's That's early, yeah. Mm. But I think the yeah. right one is... is it's later. Away, right? yeah. But, like, you know, like, come on. They're gonna, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna give it to Declan Rice or or, or Saka. They, 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 you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's not, it's not, it's not important. At the end of the day, I just, nah. I just thought, nah, I think Foden. I, I think Foden's right. probably been City's best player this season. So that gives them that's a, a massive compliment for them. But um, has he been more influential than Rice? I don't think so. Has he been more? Uh, has Van Dyke been as good as Zaliba and Gabriel? 
Yes. But if you was to look at it, if Liverpool go and win the title, you go, right, yeah, you got to go Van Dijk. But if Arsenal go and win the title, it's got to be one of those two guys. I, 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 I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll go like that. I think... I think Fodham I, I think Fodham will win it regardless of where City finish. And I think Van Dijk's going to win it. I don't think you have to win the league to necessarily... Mm. Do you know Price I mean, is going to have a level to Fodham, man. I'm sorry. I, 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 agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Like, I, Rodri is, is City's best player this season as well for me. I, I, you know, I think Foden's having a great season, 100%. 100, the, 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 the debates that are sparking up Foden, Saka. I don't get it because they're not the same position, but I get it. English, young talent, all of that. But the reality is, for me, it's, it's Rice or Rodri of yeah. Arsenal City win it. And if Liverpool win it, it depends. I, I, I'm totally with you. As much as I love Saka and all that, like, if Arsenal go on and win this title, it's because of one signing. It is a, it is a difference maker. And I think James makes a great point. Like, you know, he, he felt it wasn't quite right yesterday, you know, in, in the balance. That's because he's not playing. That's what he does. It just gives you that authority. You know, I don't think we win that game against City if he's not playing. I, I, no, I, I, I really do. I, 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 sorry, not win it, but don't lose it. I don't think we, we, we get the results. At, uh, you know, we've got results at Anfield in the last couple of years. Okay, but if you look back at that one against, uh, it was it was carnage. So we could have lost that game. Look at the control we had in those games against against Liverpool at the time. There was a time we could have won it, lost it, and drew it. You know, uh, at the end of the day, you walked out of Anfield. Even Liverpool fans are saying a draw is a fair result. Declan Rice is a big part of everything that we're doing at the moment. Yeah, well, yeah. without a doubt. Without a doubt. All right, Brighton. Um, away, 5.30 kickoff, Saturday. First. Test. Pardon? Big test. This is, this, is the, this is the big test. This is the one of the games that people will be looking at and thinking Arsenal can drop points. Yeah. It, it, it's a test because it's like a bit of a contradiction, this game. It's a tricky place where we don't have a great record. De Zerbi, Brighton, they're good. And then at the same time, there will be an expectation we win 3-0. Like it's one of those. Their, their style is to attack. Their style is to have a go. They can be quite open. They can, they can be a bit naive. Something Arsenal have been over the years. We want to prove that we're beyond that now. Uh, no one champions Brighton and Deserby more than me. Honestly, I, I, mm. people sort of mm. say he's a fraud and people say, you know, Brighton, you know, all this, all that. What have they got to show for it? I mean, for God's sake, what they've achieved is in the last few years yeah. is unbelievable. Their ability to keep recycling. I was watching their game at Liverpool. By the way, that's what people are talking about having a go. That's what having a go is without getting totally demolished. Yeah, Liverpool had chances and should have scored more, but they caused Liverpool problems. So credit to them. Um, that youngster, Belaber in midfield, who's 20 years old, you're thinking, you know, he lost the whole central midfield. He looks very good. Uh, nice. Pascal Gross, one of the most underrated players of the last five years, in my opinion. Um, Danny Welbeck can always be a handful. Jao Pedro is a talent. I don't know if he's fit or available. Evan Ferguson, we know, is a young player coming through. Lewis Dunk didn't show on international duty, but a very good player. Van Hecker, too. I've got a lot of time and respect for Brighton, the way they play. We're going to go spells without the ball in this game. I also wonder whether that was part of Wednesday night, second half. Get used to being in a shape. Get used to being in... Not that we didn't do that against City enough, but <laughs> we'll have to do some, some defending a little bit. But... But what I'll be disappointed in is if we don't really counterpunch hard because Brighton are a naturally open side that, you know, they concede a lot of chance. They concede a lot of space. A stupid young can get caught on his shoulder, you know, despite being a very good left back. And I think we need to, it's good. I think this could be quite end to end. Now, Arsenal might do to them what we did at the Emirates, which is completely suffocate them to the point where like they uh, that was one of the most dominant football matches I've ever seen in my life. It was only 2-0, but my word, did we have them pinned in for 90 minutes. If we can do that at the Amex, that would be very impressive. Uh, but I think they'll have a little bit more going the other way. So I think we might see, again, quite a pragmatic Arsenal. Yeah, I'm looking at the um, lineup from the Brentford, well, from Brighton's last couple. Um, they drew, um, didn't they, with Brentford? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they drew nil nil. But I'm not, yeah. Pedro started. Uh, Matoma's okay. out. March is out as well, but he's been out for quite a while now. Um, aside from that, 
I'm seeing everyone else. I need to see that. But yeah, I mean, Matoma and March are big losses themselves. Last season, there was two two players everyone had an eye on. Um, do we, uh, okay. Circle back to Havertz. <laughs> Firstly, I'll ask. With, with the Bayern game being more or the most important of the week, I guess, if you had to put them in, in importance, even though it feels weird saying that, because is it, you know, any points dropped in the league is, you know, it's very tight, if not over. So this game is more important. This well, game is more important. Brian. Yeah. Okay. So what do we do? I mean, for me, I think it's time for Jesus to be put up front again. Um, and I think Brighton is probably a good a good team to do it against just to give him the chance to you know because I don't think he'd done much wrong apart from getting injured to, in terms of losing his place and I don't think Havertz has done much right in the last two I know I got criticism in my fan camp for saying it was a poor performance against City I know he 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 had some moments but again I'm just coming from the place of you know highest earner big money signing starting up top City I don't care what jewels you won in the fucking defensive third like what i care about is when you've got the ball in the attacking third what do you do and i think in the in the last couple he's let himself down yes he got the assist against luton but he had a couple of moments beforehand when he really should have done better so bearing in mind we've got another striker where we've talked similar over the years that is he the one does he have the goals in him can he do this but he can do that is this now the game to put Jesus back in up front and, and, and maybe take Havertz out and, and have him ready for the Bayern Munich game where a more physical striker might be better? 100%. He 100%. I think like um, Havertz is pivotal to what we do. Uh, I, I agree with you yesterday. I thought he was a bit slow. The first couple of minutes, he should have put Trossard through with, with, an, with an easy yeah. ball. He, yeah. he, he, he done it. But then he come back with the, the goal for, for Odegaard, which was, which was class. But for me, Jesus hasn't done nothing wrong. I think you go back to the game against Nottingham Forest. I think that he was superb in that. I think that you're going to need to go toe-to-toe toe, toe -to -toe with these. So for me, I, I, my, my front three for um, Saturday is Jesus, Saka coming back in and Trossard. And I'd get minutes again in for um, Martinelli. But my front three against Bayern Munich will be Martinelli, um, Havertz and, and Saka. So, um, yeah, I, I think that this is a big game. Listen, someone told me, I don't know if this is right, that Brighton have only lost one game at home this season, so it's not going to be an easy game. And at the end of the day, if you're choosing between Havertz and uh, Jesus, you know, beginning of the season, it would always been Jesus. So I don't think it's a, a downgrade. That's the great thing about it. It's a different way of playing to a certain degree. But, you know, James is right. I think that um, Jesus can't, Probably they're probably managing it that he can't play three games in a week. So that you know, I, I'd be very very surprised if he's not playing in this game. Um, yeah, and yeah. Saka's not quite right. Come after Saturday, you know, Jesus will probably take his places on the right hand side. But I think that uh, Jesus is still a very very important player to us. And I think that again, a little bit like you know, we forget how good he is. I'll go Jesus. Right. Oh, you agree, James? Mm, I'd give him the start front. Um, I don't think Havertz was good at all against um, against Luton. Nice assist, worked hard, all that. But yeah, it wasn't coming off for him in terms of the link-up play. I wonder if that's tiredness. Mm. You know, just there's only certain players we talk about when it comes to tiredness. We talk about um, maybe Jesus because the injuries for Declan Rice because how much he runs, Saka, uh, Erdegaard because his work rate. Um, with Havertz, he looked quite sloppy. And I know that he showed that sloppiness at the start of the season when he wasn't tired. Um, but he did look a little, I don't know, just kind of not at the level he'd been at in the games before. And I include City purely because of the work rate and how much he puts himself about and everything. Um, I think the reason we don't talk about tiredness, and this is, this is now going to sound really harsh, but I think it's because we talk about the players we're most worried about losing. We talk about the players we're most concerned about it affecting yeah. them. And the reality with Havertz is, every, you know, what I said earlier in this podcast, everyone fit and firing at their best. Havertz doesn't make my best ass on 11. It is still Jesus up top. It is still Partey or Jorginho with Rice and Erdegaard in midfield. And of course, the two wide players. So there's almost this like, well, he can keep playing because, you know, he, there's, there's people to come in. We're not as worried about it. I know that sounds harsh. That's just the reality of it. As much as he's given us a proper shift up front recently, and I totally applaud him for that. Um, 
I just think he didn't look at it against Luton. Take him out because he's played a lot of football international break as well. That's fine. Doesn't have to be on it all the time. Get Jesus in there. I also think that is the game that I think you're going to cause Van Hecker and, and Duncan more problems with. If Jesus is at it, it is Wrigley best, you know, twisting and turning, bringing players into play. And if Martinelli's fit, then I feel like we need to get the components around him. If he's good enough, if he's fit to start, he's come off the bench twice now. You get him on that left and you get Jesus there to link up. You get Declan Rice to support. I think if we start, when we give him Havertz either up front or out on the left, it can feel a little bit more disjointed, though I get that he's played well with Havertz up front recently. So yeah, I would just be, it's no grand criticism of Havertz, it genuinely isn't. I just think, I'd love to see if Jesus, Saka and Martinelli can get back to their best for the running. Yeah. Because if they can, that is the that is the front three that went to Seville and won, you know, and played really well away in the Champions League. And, you know, last season was tearing teams apart for Arsenal. So that's the one I'd go with um, for Jesus and Havertz related reasons. Yeah, Jordan, Jesus, Havertz, who would you go with? Uh, yeah, I probably agree with you all. I probably would bring in Jesus only uh, only because I would rather have a start against Bayern. So, and I, I think you, you, he played he played against City, he played last night to play again, and then Bayern four I'll be four games in less than ten days. That's a heavy load. And I know he's not a pressing type player, but that's still you know I don't think we should underestimate how much legwork went into the City game um, mm -hmm. from all the players. So um, I think we've got to manage minutes and manage manage players' fitness. I think that's the one advantage we have over City and Liverpool in this title race. We've got everybody fit now, bar Timber. Liverpool have still got three or four key players out. City have got three or four key players out. So whilst we've got that advantage, let's 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 use it and manipulate it to our to our advantage. So yeah, I'd probably go with with, with Kai Havertz. Um, sorry, Jesus for this game. Um, I, I don't know if I would necessarily call Brighton our bogey team because I think we've beaten them as much as they've beaten us, but they have beaten us quite a bit <laughs> over the last two or three seasons. So this is a potential banana skin that. I don't think we should take take lightly. Um, James outlined earlier on all the reasons why Brighton are a problem. They've got some good players. I'm a huge fan of Deserby. I rate Deserby very, very, very highly. Um, as I mentioned, the record against us is is, is pretty good. Um, weirdly, more so the Emirates than at, than at their ground. But even at their ground, they've um, yeah. they've taken points of us. And I think they beat us in the cup one year. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, last anyway. year they they slapped us at the Emirates twice last year. Yeah, Once that's in right. The that's right, yeah. So this is not a game. I know everyone's got their eyes on the, the old toilet game and three-point lane game, but this, these are the sort of games where if, if we're not on it, and there's a slim chance, very slim, but there's a slim chance Liverpool will drop points at um, at United this weekend. So if they do, we need to capitalise on that by handling our business and winning three points. This is going to be a tough game. This is going to be a really tough game. Yeah. But again, this is the game. If you want to be Premier League champions, you assert yourselves. You push out your chest and you say, Brighton, you're good. You're good. But it's not personal. We've come in for three points. Give us our three points or we'll take the three points and let us go about our business. Um, let's not get involved in any nonsense. Mm. Let's just get in there, handle business like Premier League champions elect um, and get the hell out and keep it moving. I'd play Jorginho as well, by the way. So, so would I. I. So um, would I. I, for for all the promise shown by Partey, he's not showing levels to the point where you're like, you've got to get this guy in the team. And again, you play 30 against City, look good. Play an hour against uh, Luton, looked fine. If he comes on for 30 again against Brighton, looks good, then the temptation's to play him for Bayern. But I, I because <laughs> of that game coming so soon, you think, well, we'd rather have Jorginho for that game. I get it. I would, I would go for Jewel. I, I, for me, I just can't think about buying till Brighton's done. Yeah, I just yeah, can't. Yeah. So let's do what we have to do for that one, and then we'll see where, what shape, what we're it, what's, what we're looking like. It's interesting because even you know at the beginning when I said I'd probably save Havertz or Bayern, and then you mentioned Duncan Van Heck, and then I think about Upa Makano, and I think well, would Jesus probably do better against Upa Makano, who's kind of all over the gaff? Would Havertz do better against a Dunk Van Heck who like to get physical? So comment section, let us know your thoughts. Um, yeah, it's difficult. Havertz or Jesus, who you starting up front against Brighton? Jorginho or Partey, who you starting in the middle against Brighton? Bearing in mind that we're going to assume that whoever you start against Brighton, 
probably gets rotated out of the um, Bayern Munich game. Hit the like button. Let's get to 1,055 minutes on the dot. So we're going to slowly but surely, if everyone's good to go on predictions, let me bring up the table. Yeah. There it is. No change. Everyone got one point. No one got the 2 nil correct score. Bang on. So, yeah, as is, James top. I'm in second. Leeds in third. Jordan's in fourth place. But James has got a healthy lead, six-point lead at the top of the table. So, James, bright and away. Hmm. I really don't know, everyone. Um, I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna uh, two one two one Arsenal three one Arsenal before you change it. I I don't think we're getting through. I just I don't I don't know if we're scoring three. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Your fingers crossed, we'll see. I think we're gonna do a lot of defending in mm. this game, annoyingly. 2 0. 2 0, Lee. That's what I nearly went with. I, I mean, can we, can we keep them out when we, I mean, we can? We're capable of it, but let's have a go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, we've been so solid recently that it's mm. hard to see us concede, but law of averages, I'd say, you know, there, there's a goal coming against us real soon. Um, Jordan 2 2. Oh, he thinks there's two. Two, two. Oh, no. That would be so heartbreaking. Uh, yeah, I've just got... If it's two, two, I'd hate Jordan come Sunday's episode, you know? Why? Yeah. <laughs> it's not your fault. No, it's not your fault, but you would have got points off of the, 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 the result. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. You the reason that. I've, I've just... I, I, I was going to go for a three, two Arsenal win. I, I just... Um, a, I need to close some points back, so I need to be different. But I've just... This is not going to be an easy game. It's not going to be an easy game. Nah, so to round off the predictions, people, James has gone 2 1, I've gone 3 1, Lee's gone 2 0, and Jordan has gone 2 2. Let us know yours, comment section below, and we move prediction table off. Comments of the day up, everyone ready to go? Everyone, they, they were class, they were class this week. There was a lot of good ones, innit? Well, there was a great, yeah, there was a great <laughs> one I couldn't find as well that I saw very early on, and I've been scrolling through, but I can't find it. But I've got four uh, of them. Uh, Oh, go on, go on, James, go on. No, no, you carry on. Well, I, 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 I thought we were crap this week, so I, I've just I've, I've reduced to finding a nice one about James. Um, it's got here, um, set ZZ. James, a young man with such a naturally mature way of analysing football matches. Well done, putting things into perspective. And I thought it was just a nice comment about James, but I thought it was also relevant because it was James' analysis that made me change my mind on the City game and how I saw it. So, um yeah, that was the best of the worst for me. Can I ask you a question and be honest with me because it won't cost you anything? Did you really struggle to find a comment or was I it did. The you plucked out of thin air in the morning? No, 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 no. I, I, just, I, looked, I, I, I looked last night. It's one of the ones at the top, like. It's one of the ones at the yeah. top. He's going to find this nice one about James. Yeah. No, no, no. He's yeah. just yeah. forgot yeah. about it. He's just jumped in. I've got a gem of a comment. We've all done it. We've all I, done I, it. I went through last night. And I went first. I didn't see anyone that particularly stood out to me. So I thought, if I can't find a good one, pick a nice one. So I picked a nice one. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, we'll have to believe you. We'll have to yeah. believe you. Um, who's up next? I, I will say that um, I thought James, um, the way he talked about the game, was it, it did, you know, change your mind. And, and, and the word influence comes up like, you know, um, and that's what he did because he did influence a lot of people. He influenced my opinion about that as well like you know so it was a very very good analysis from him like you know well thank you David Lee's complimenting James I know who'd who'd have thought who'd have thought well no I did I thought that was good I thought it was good like can I go next then you can (laughs) thank you one hour ten minutes for judges on the toilet while on the podcast that's what I call multitasking (laughs) (laughs) really and the other one I've got to say this because I was going through it and um this is from Sunny AFC. AFC. This is the show. This is the best show on YouTube, hands down. Love the balance. Big up all of you, like you know. I, I do say. Even yesterday, I was at, you know um, in the ground. People coming up for Forever Arsenal and saying it's the best podcast out there and all that. It's such a humbling thing when you see people taking the time to write that down as well. Um, yeah. For all the chaos of the last pod, by the way, I really enjoyed the last pod. It was really good. Um, yeah, 
it, you know, it's really nice to see those compl- uh, people take the time out to compliment us. Uh, and, and as a nice balance, and I think that's what we've got. We've got a good balance, and I, I, I think that's yeah. a good comment. Uh, and any, any sponsors want to kind of jump on and sponsor the podcast? Boohoo, British Gas, BT, any any British any Gas. brands out there want to jump on and pay us some money to continue the podcast? We were, where our phone our phone is charged and ready to receive phone calls. <laughs> There you go, Same. people. Make sure you contact Jordan plus four four seven seven two. Don't, don't phone me. <laughs> phone phone the big man. Phone Rob. Don't Rob. <laughs> On that note, though, I mean, big up because I um you reminded me. I met well, I met someone when I was picking up little man from nursery the other day. Big up Sam. He said he's a big supporter of the Forever Arsenal podcast. Um, local to the area as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed this show. Hopefully you're enjoying Arsenal at the moment. And let me get my comment in next if that's all good with James. Mm-hmm. Go for it. My one's from Ryan Anderson. He says, Turkish speaking gospel here regarding Mikel and Arsenal. James speaking with pure heart and logic about the result. Jordan speaking as usual and Lee speaking whilst taking a dump. Love it. (laughs) (laughs) Pick up Ryan. (laughs) There were loads. There were loads of good ones. I have actually quite a few to read out of different ones, different sort of themes but we'll go through it first i did see a lot of the love in the comments so thank you i appreciate it a lot and um nice lee being nice to me means a lot jordan you're always nice to me but oh yeah, oh, yeah. you know voldemort's never complimented harry so <laughs> um so this just gonna fly through some uh azam navid says lee taking a dump while doing the podcast is iconic 172 likes such a simple comment but i totally agree uh this one different tone ryan says james's speech and followed by turkish's they're getting their last licks in with some of the best words i've heard on this uh on this podcast also spot on i agree man i was i was feeling i was feeling um motivated like when you were saying like this is they're just having their last shots i was like Bro, soon yeah. they they soon they will all be quiet. Trust me, soon. Uh, this is from Talvin James. Love your stuff. We need Lee's ex brackets expected shits for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that one. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. You and Graham need to do a special technical insight about this guy's <laughs> shit. <laughs> but he adds to it. He goes, "Must be his bad abductor problem." <laughs> <laughs> Nah, he, he doubled up. <laughs> That's a quality one from uh, Calvin. Uh, Calvin Player, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, Joe says Lee finally knows how Michelle felt. No, oh, that one was no, nah, that one. I'm glad you got that in. I'm glad you got that in. <laughs> um, Daza can't believe Lee judges his miss- missus locked him in the bathroom this time. Uh, shout out to from. Huh? Yeah, with an iPad, yeah, iPad as well. <laughs> this is from Yusuf. I thought there were some great ones. This is from Yusuf. Uh, should, to, should the title for today's episode be Just Before James Comes In? Which I thought was good. I don't know if you realise that was said a lot on the last pod. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, well, and then there was one more. Uh, Juan Bravo. Lee gets deducted a point for freezing the stream to go take her, and then he puts a dump emoji. So there we go. Well done, everyone. Can, can, I, can I just can I just go say, Tate? You know, because uh, it was for, like fame, but no one will know this. Uh, the hotel we were staying in, right, had um, like low beams. So when I've gone to run out to get my phone, I've smashed my head straight on that, like you know. And I, I've had to, I was in agony. I got bumped on my head and all that. And like, I couldn't shout or scream and all that, like, because I was like in, like, in agony. And when I got back, everything was froze. So I could have fucking gone mad, you know what I mean? But I thought I can't because we was on the thing, like, you know what I mean? So <laughs> nearly knocked myself out. Fair enough. Can, can, can I just say, I've just seen a notification on my phone literally 25 minutes ago. Um, a comment in one of my other podcasts. Someone's just put, When's the pod, Jordan? Arsenal games are incomplete without the Forever Arsenal pod. So on my other podcasts, I've got Arsenal Forever Arsenal fans literally hitting me up, that. asking for. I'm like, we're literally recording it right now. <laughs> we're literally doing it now. That People love it. People that love it. Um, yeah. All right, predictions done. We've discussed Luton. We've previewed Brighton. We will be back after Brighton before another big one against Bayern Munich Champions League quarterfinal at the Emirates. 
and we'll be recording our next one Sunday morning. So it'll be at Sunday at some point. So it won't be Monday with the quick turnaround um, with the Bayern Munich game. The next pod will be at Sunday, but the next pod is the next pod. This pod is this pod. Make sure you hit the like button. Let's get up to a thousand, up to two thousand if we can. Share it, tag us, do all of that. Show some love if you see us. Make sure you subscribe, put the notification bell on. Individual channels, like I said before, you know where to find it. James Universally, Judges TV, Whisper It Loudly, um, not for clicks, Turkish LDN. But obviously, more importantly, Forever Arsenal is right here. So make sure you're subscribed, hit the like button. Love for the love as always. And we'll be back real soon, people. Come on, Arsenal. Thank <laughs> you.